Sweet. Awesome. Hi, guys. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm super happy to be here with my friend, Troy. We are both Proctor Gallagher in or Institute consultants, and we are both also going through the Thinking into Results program, and it has changed both of our lives. So we just wanted to come on here and share with you guys some insight on this and add some value to your life. Today, we're going to be talking about goals, setting the right goals. That's a huge thing that a lot of people miss. We're going to be talking about attitude. We're going to be talking about self-image and paradigms. And if we have some time left, the fun stuff in between. I know that Troy and I can both talk about this stuff for hours, but yeah. unfortunately, we <laughs> only have one hour today. <laughs> so yeah. we're just going to jump right into it. So I'm going to hand it over to yeah. Troy to talk about goals for a little bit. Here to bring value into people's lives and hopefully this will make some sort of impact or give people an insight to uh, have move forward with their goals and their dreams. So I love starting off with a quote and this is a great quote by Napoleon Hill and he says those who reach decisions promptly and definitely know what they want and generally get it. The leaders in every walk of life decide quickly and firmly. That is the major reason why they are leaders. The world has the habit of making room for the person who word, whose words and actions show where they are going. So that is so powerful because the only way that you're ever going to achieve anything in life is to have a goal. And I love Bob's um, analogy of this. He says, you know, if you're going out of your driveway and, and someone says, where are you going? Well, you could be going west. And they'll keep saying, where are you going? You could be going west and west and west and west and you just be going in circles and circles and you'll never get to any sort of destination. That's why you have to have a goal. So then you can pinpoint some sort of direction in your, in your life. So there's basically ABCs to goals. So the A type goal is something that you kind of know that you'll be able to achieve. The B type goal is something that if everything kind of falls into alignment, then you'll, you think you'll be able to achieve it. See, you have a car and you want to buy a new car that's maybe a little bit more expensive, but the same type of car. And if everything falls into alignment, you'll be able to buy that car. And that's kind of a B type goal. Then the C type goal is something that you have no idea how you're going to achieve it. And those are the types of goals that we want to go after. A C type goal, a fantasy, something that makes you stretch, something that makes you grow. And those are the goals that are going to make us accomplish uh, quantum leaps in our life, which is what we really want to do. Um, so, yeah, so those are basically the ABCs of, uh, of goals in our lives. Do you have anything to add to that, Emma? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, kind of like what I said in the very beginning, we, kind of, we all have goals. It's human nature to set goals, but a lot of us go through life with not setting the right goals for ourselves. And for a lot of people, they don't even really contemplate that that's even an idea that we can have that's right. goals. And that doesn't mean that the thing you're going after is not right for you. It just means that it's not going to be stretching you in the way that a, a goal should, because goal is all about goals are all about growth. It's that growth that happens in between that we're really looking for. Um, exactly. Yeah. And so setting the right goals is going to catapult you to these desires and we all have desires for a reason. So these taking the time to learn about, what a goal is, how it should be helping you and how to set the right ones are going to catapult you into this path of actually achieving these goals and into this path of achieving these desires. And the whole way is going to be so beautiful and wonderful because you're really going to feel like you're in alignment with these passions and desires that you have. That's right. That's right too. And uh, there, there is sort of a formula um, to setting goals. And I mean, there's a formula to everything. There's a formula to learning how to play an instrument. Uh, there's a formula to learning how to fly a plane. Um, there's a formula to success. And uh, like Bob said, you know, success is not a secret. It's a system. And once you learn the system, you can have anything you want. Yeah. So this formula to setting goals, um, I have this diagram here. And basically the first idea of setting a C type goal is starting with a fantasy. Just take everything, any limitation that you have in that thinking, because it's, it basically comes down to a belief, you know, beliefs are limitations. So you have to, you know, acknowledge that they're there and just 
kick them out of the way, basically. So you have to have a fantasy, something if you had all the money in the world, you had all the resources, anything that you wanted in life, build that fantasy in your mind. And then what you want to do is you want to say, am I willing? Am I willing to do what it takes? Am I willing to put the hours in? Am I willing to go to school? Whatever it takes, connecting with people. And then am I able? And of course, we have unlimited resources within us, you know, um, unlimited capabilities, you know, to accomplish anything we want. Um, we have these higher faculties and a lot of times people are using them, but they're actually, they don't even realize that they're using them. We have intuition, um, will, uh, memory, imagination, uh, intuition, and these are all so powerful to reaching our goals. So we have, we are able to basically accomplish anything that we want. So, you know, and then that turns into a theory. So you're kind of, you're taking that fantasy and then you're like, you're going, well, you know, I am able to do this. I do have what it takes to be able to do this. I am willing to do what it takes to put the hours in, to, get to connect with the people, you know, whatever it takes. Then that, once you establish that, and then you actually plant that idea into your heart and you say, I am going to do this. Then you turn that into a goal and then that goal becomes a fact. So it, it it's sort of a system. And I want to give you a few examples of people that had have done that exact same system and have accomplished a many, many amazing things. One is Thomas Edison with the light bulb. He failed 10,000 times and he was willing to do whatever it took to accomplish uh, creating that light bulb. Um, Henry Ford is another perfect example. He had a fantasy. There was They never had cars before Henry Ford. So he had this fantasy he could take with the right people look at the Ford Motor Company today, one of the biggest on the planet. The Wright brothers, there is no one flew anything before them. They had a fantasy, a couple of bicycle mechanics. It was a fantasy that they say that they were going to quit. No, they kept going. There was people ridiculing their father, so many people, um, you know, and they built that fantasy in their mind and they, they held it in their heart too. They saw it in their mind, which is, we're going to get into that a little bit more, but that's, that's extremely powerful too. And then Einstein, you know, he created the, the quantum physics, you know, so he had that idea in his mind. So these are a couple prime examples, you know, and then John, John F. Kennedy that put, you know, flight, you know, or put the man on the moon. So that's another thing. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on and on. But I think, you know, one of the big things about having a C-Tech goal is, is it's a big idea, you know, but there's definitely kind of like, say, uh, Ed Hillary wanted to get to the top of Everest, right? But, you know, there was, there was kind of plateaus that they had to get to. So you have that C-type goal, getting to the top of the mountain, but then you have these levels that these goals that are going to get you to that, um, that peak of the mountain. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Can you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, there. These, these goals, these right goals for us are there to make us stretch. Um, but because we're stretching, we're going to experience growing pains. And a lot of people let them throw, let that throw them off of the path of going towards their goals. But that doesn't mean that you're never going to reach it. We want to fail. You, failing yes, is yeah. it's just a sign that you're kind of on the right path. Failing is teaching you the lessons that you need to yes. learn in order to yeah. enjoy your manifestation of your goals the fullest when it actually happens to you. So yeah, exactly. that's why, yeah, that's why we want to have that stretch. That's why we want to go towards something that we've never gone towards before. Something that maybe we didn't even allow ourselves to think we're capable of before. Something we have exactly. no idea how, yeah, we're going how it's going to gonna happen. Yeah. Exactly. Right? I have to say that the, it's really the no. two prerequisites for anything we want in life are yeah. asking yourself, am I willing and am I able? But you also have to want something. You have to have that desire, that burning, that burning desire or something. And yeah. the rest is going to fall into place. You don't really need to know. For sure. You don't have to see the path. You really don't. I like to use the analogy of driving at night. You don't see, you only see the next 15, 20 feet in front of you. You can't see the entire road to get to your destination, but you never question it. You never, oh my God, am I going to get there? Like, right. because I can't see it right in this current moment, am I actually going to get to my destination? You never question that. You know that if you just keep driving, you're going yeah. to get there. And it's the same thing yeah. with reaching towards a goal that you can't see the path. It's actually a really good sign that you can't yes. see the path. And so I love that, you know, you. 
you're good. <laughs> Trial and error. I mean, you know, like you, you got to fail because when you fail, you learn so much. Mm -hmm. um, for me, um, you know, doing music and stuff, you know, being on stage and, and doing solo acoustic stuff, you know, it, it was terrifying at first. And, you know, and I had to fail many, many times before. And I, I just took it you know, with the thought that I'm learning every single time, you know, and my fear is also getting less and less every time because I'm facing it. So going for these, you know, these big goals too, you're going to have fear, you know, it's just part of it, you know, having that terror barrier and you gotta, you gotta plow through it. You know, it's, it's super, super important to face that and, and keep moving because, um, you know, the best things on the other side of fear is the greatest things in life, you know, so we really have to um, acknowledge that and not let that stop us from accomplishing yeah. these big goals. Absolutely. And a huge thing that is going to help you push past that terror barrier is your attitude. And totally. Totally. Yeah, if, if we're ready to move on to attitude, I'd love to share some insight. Sure. On that. Absolutely. Emma. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah. yeah, so like he said, there's going to be a terror barrier, and that's not a bad thing. That's a sign that you're on the right path, but we have tools that we can develop to get us to persevere past this terror barrier, and one of the big ones is attitude, and our attitude plays a bigger role in our life and the results we get than we give it credit for. Bob Proctor and Earl Nightingale like to call attitude the magic word, and this is really because our attitude towards life determines life's attitude towards us. It's totally. so true. And I know that's super general. It's a really general phrase. So we can break it down a little bit and understand that whether we recognize it or not, we have an attitude surrounding everything we do. Absolutely everything we do. And this attitude everything. controls yeah. how we do these things, which then control the results we get from the things that we do. Yeah. So when you break it all down, when you take it all apart, attitude is kind of just standing there left. Everything you do is going to determine on the attitude you have when you go into it. We, we have to understand that we live in a vibrational universe. We really live in a vibrational universe. Everything is vibrating on a specific frequency. Absolutely everything. Your thoughts and your goals, they all vibrate on a specific frequency. That's right. And That's so right. we have to understand that we are a vibrational match for everything in our experience. Right now, we are currently, always, 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 right now, a vibrational match for everything we see in our reality. So this is gonna be the first step, understanding this is gonna be the first step in being able to take control of our attitude and use it as an aid, instead of letting it control us. Because we all know what it's like to go into something with a bad attitude and then just have your experience confirm your bad attitude like yeah that was horrible but you expected it to be horrible so of course it was horrible or maybe you wake up with a bad attitude and your day just keeps rolling like that just bad things keep happening that keep affirming your bad attitude so that's right yeah that's right and i think you know um what was i went to a bob proctor seminar in 2016 the paradigm shift and i remember sandy um going through the gratitude right and that was the first time i ever heard of this thing you know i've heard of gratitude and stuff you know be grateful you know in the past and stuff like that but but this exercise was super powerful and i've been doing basically every day since maybe i've missed one or two days but it, she said write out 10 things that you're grateful every single morning and i do this you know before my feet even hit the ground because that you know that that sets your intention for the day and that puts you in a vibration you know, and that vibration goes through the day. If you keep doing it, it's going to go through the week. You keep doing it, it's going through the month, the year, your life. You know, you have that vibration of gratitude. So what I developed was I started doing seven things that I'm grateful for. It could be simple as, you know, your favorite pair of jeans, your favorite cup of coffee. I'm so grateful, you know, that I got a roof over my head. You know, anything like that, you know. But then you write out three things that, you're, that haven't manifested in your life yet that you do want. Because, you know, you have to really, like Emma said, you have to, everything's vibrating and, and whatever we're giving our attention to, we're going to attract into our life because everything is on a frequency. So if we're grateful for something that has yet to manifest in our life, we will attract it by law, you know? So those 10 things, writing those out every single morning, it's very powerful. Yeah, it will, it will change your whole perspective oh, yeah. on life. It really will. Yeah. And yeah. it's going to gain momentum and through, yeah. like Joy said, by law, through the law of attraction, 
more yeah. situations to feel grateful for are going to start showing up in your life. Even if you have to kind of trick yourself to be grateful, do it. Totally. Do it. Totally. If you think yeah. you have nothing to be grateful for, that's never true. It's never true. There's always Absolutely. something. By yeah. law, by the law of polarity, there's always something. Always something. Always yeah. something. And it's a perspective perspective too right you know and it's a perspective on life and that comes down to attitude because I you know we we get to choose and, and one of the higher faculties is we have a reasoning mind so um you know there there's a power flowing to and through us and and we we have the you know ability to direct that power with our thoughts and what we choose and we get to choose what's you know positive or negative and in, in our life and the thing is most people they just look at their outside conditions right and and of course we got to be aware of that stuff but we can't let that control our thinking you know um we have the ability the reasoning mind so we get to choose and then you know being grateful and and the thing is there there's good and bad in everything in life but it's what do you focus on you know there is good in everything you know so we get to choose so it's yeah. it's super powerful to uh, to have that reasoning aspect of uh, i mean you know i was reading Psy psycho cybernetics the other day and it's it's an amazing book and and he he says that we actually have a, a success mechanism within us right because we're designed by our creator to be successful you know i mean the thing is that we have to learn we have to study every single day and understand the laws of the universe and the laws of our being and and how we can be in harmony with them to create the life that we desire mm -hmm. yeah, yeah absolutely i love i love the idea of having the opportunity to choose it's yes awesome totally. It's absolutely awesome. And this means yeah. that with like attitude and going t towards your goals, you have to go, if you want to achieve these goals that you've set for yourself, you have to go in with the attitude that it is already yours, that this goal is already fulfilled. And you have to go in the attitude of gratitude that it's already fulfilled and that the path to it is easy and delicious. Easy. It's easy. That's, yeah. that's all. Easy. Just think it's easy. Yeah. If you think it's hard, it's going to be hard. If you totally. think it's easy. Yeah. And this is going to set you up to be a vibrational match for the thing you desire because yep. we already are a vibrational match for everything we see in our reality. Yeah. But we're obviously not a vibrational match for the things that we desire. Otherwise we'd have them right now. So that's going right. in with this attitude of it's easy. It's easy. already done. Yeah, of course Love it's going to happen. I feel so grateful for this. This is setting us up to be a vibrational match for that, for these things that we desire. Absolutely. Um, and it's going to mean that these goals and desires are going to be our reality and they're not going to live in our heads as fantasies yeah it's super and fun, <laughs> it's fun. It and there's and then of course there's seven main laws of the universe but the you know the one main law is the law of polarity mm -hmm. so it, whatever you're anything that you're not enjoying in in life by law there is a polar opposite to it it's law mm -hmm. you know there's a law of polarity for everything up down hot cold black white you know uh, big small in out you know so it's by law. So if you can focus on what you want instead of what you don't want, like even, you know, say there's not enough money in your bank account to kind of be able to do something that you want on the weekend. You cannot let your mind go there because you're just going to get more of that. Mm -hmm. You have to build that fantasy. You have to think in your mind and that's how you're going to attract those experiences. Totally. And you have to put in the work to maintain the attitude for despite sure. what your circumstances are telling you, kind of what we're talking about, what we just talked about a few minutes ago. Your circumstances are always going to tell you something. That doesn't mean that that's how your life is. That doesn't mean that's totally. how your life has to be forever. And if we are subject to the control of our circumstance, we're going to be stuck in those circumstances forever. Sure. Yeah. So we have to live from the inside out. We cannot live from the outside in. And that's where most people make the mistake. They, yeah. It's more natural for us to live from the outside in, where it's more natural to see something and have that thing tell us what is true about our life. It, it well, it's like logic. It, it's yeah, like it's logic, possible. right? You mm -hmm. can't you can't let logic control you know your reality really you know and that's the and that's why ninety seven percent of the people are getting the same results to year after year after year because you have like look at Bob he's been studying this material every single day you know for six over sixty years yeah. you know and he's always wanting to grow it and and it contributes to his success and anybody that he works with right totally. you know and it's a reflection in your world because when your world changes you know everybody else's world you know, around you change too. Yes, 
Absolutely. And it's about like per, uh, switching that perspective. The circumstances aren't controlling you. You're controlling the circumstances. It's oh. not about becoming the creator of your reality. It's realizing you already are the creator of your reality. Yeah. Yeah. You already are. Everything you see is a manifestation yeah. of your own thoughts and experiences. So well, it's people, stepping into people, that role and doing it deliberately. Yeah, and people think, oh, well, well, artists are just creators or, or, or painters or musicians or something. No, we're, you know, we're all creating, you know, every, every minute of our life, you know. And that is why we have gotten the results or, you know, the positions that we're in because we have created it. We, but we're trying to give this value to you and trying to share this information to help you see that you are in control, you know, of your results. And, and if you, if you understand how the mind works, you can control the outside conditions. Yeah. I mean, it takes a little bit of stepping up and yeah. it takes a little bit, you have to take responsibility. It definitely yeah. have to take responsibility, but because of the law of polarity, you can see that as a negative thing. You can see that as so horrible. Oh my gosh, I put myself here. That's yeah. how can I do this? Or, okay, totally. that's really yeah. cool. I wasn't aware of that before. And now I am. And now I can Boom. switch that. And there you go. Go to exactly. where I go. Mm -hmm. exactly. If you walk around with the expectation of the worst, expecting to fail, expecting yeah. things to go wrong, expecting to be laughed at or rejected, nine times out of 10, your experiences are going to reflect your expectations. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. So th I think that ties in perfectly with paradigms. So we have just given you ideas of how to set, you know, and achieve some of your goals. But the thing is, now we're going to get into what sometime is getting in people's way. And I don't know if any of you have heard of this word paradigm, but uh, we can get into that. So paradigms are something sometimes, uh, well, for the most time, that, that get in people's way and sabotage their success. So what paradigms are is it's a multitude of habits that are stored in a section of our subconscious mind. So our mind is divided into two parts. We have a conscious section and we have a subconscious part. So 97% of all our results are due from our subconscious mind. So our paradigms control everything in our life. It controls our finances. It controls our health. It controls our, our time productivity. Um, it controls our relationships. You know, every aspect of our life is controlled by the paradigm. So until we're about 17 or 18 years old, um, we didn't have a conscious mind. So anything in our surroundings was just dumped into our subconscious mind and that formed our paradigms. And that's how, you know, most people walk through life. It's, it's almost like they're, you know, they're a zombie and they're kind of controlled by it until we bring this awareness to them that you, you are in control of your paradigms. Mm -hmm. So there's only two ways really to um, change paradigms. And one is a emotional impact like 9-11 or something like that. Like that, that, that's a huge emotional impact of people's lives. And the other aspect of changing it is through time, space, repetition. So there's some paradigms in our life you know, that are, that are good. Some results that we're getting that we enjoy, but there's some results that we're getting that we don't enjoy. And those are the paradigms that we want to work on. So, yeah. And it's all, it's all energy again, whatever we're contributing to, but we have to be aware of uh, what's getting in our way. Yeah, absolutely. The paradigms, they're the control center of our results. So without even knowing it, they could yeah. be the reason why you have a hard time changing your attitude or they could be the reason why you're not able to set a proper goal for yourself or change your self-image or work on your self-image. They're all, it, it all ties in together and your paradigm is kind of the underlying culprit to yeah. all of it. And that doesn't mean that we have like paradigms can be good. Paradigms yeah, absolutely good. Sure. Like, let's say somebody yeah. has a paradigm that they wake up early every day. That's just, yeah what they're set to it's their or they go to the gym or they go to the gym you know and they, that's something that yeah. probably is assisting them in life so not all right. paradigms are bad but a lot of the paradigms well the, no matter if they're good or bad they're controlling us they're absolutely in control we can go off the path a little bit from our paradigm maybe for a few days a week and then we're going to be brought right back every single time so yeah. if we want to see significant change in our results we have to put the work in to change those paradigms 
Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And it takes time. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. You know, like it says, that time, space, repetition. So, and, and, and you have to be persistent and, and persistence is such a huge word in any sort of thing that we want to be successful at. So it, it's an everyday uh, study and uh, being aware of these paradigms and, and having the desire to be able to want to change them you know, and uh, given the attention to it for sure. Yeah, so yeah, I think, you know, like our results really come down to it. They're definitely a direct reflection of our thoughts, beliefs, habits, and mindset. So, you know, studying is, is so important and, and working with a mentor, someone that, because we all have blind spots, right? So, you know, there's, there's things that we don't see and that's the most successful people in the world all have mentors. It's just, it's, it's part of it. Again, back to Bob, like he still works with people all the time, you know, because like we just, we all have blind spots. So we all need someone just from a different perspective to say, Hey, uh, this is something that you might be missing and um, it can catapult you to a quantum leap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You definitely want to share your goals and your experiences with somebody, somebody yeah. that, can encourage you and give you advice along the way. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and it, it, it all ties into your ability to form this attitude and form the self-image, which we'll get into in a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I think we bring it back a little bit too, because we we're talking yeah. about the money attraction mindset. Sure. So yeah. We bring it back to attitude. We can all agree because we kind of all like starts with attitude. Paradigms is the underlying culprit. But then it kind of like stacks on itself with attitude and self-image and all this stuff. So we can all agree that money is something that is on all of our minds in one way or another. Absolutely is. But we can take a pretty educated guess that when it does cross your mind, it is in the form of lack. It could be in the form of, oh, I need more or I don't have enough or if only I could be making this amount or my life would be so much different if I could just be making this much money or yeah. when I get money, I will start living a certain <laughs> way. Yeah. And so, so I'm sure most of you will agree that when money crosses your mind, it is in the form of one of these thoughts. And like you'll remember, I said, everything is on a vibrational frequency. And this can be affirmed by the acknowledgement of how these thoughts make you feel. Yeah. These yeah. thoughts don't feel good. They're limiting. They're thoughts of lack. Oh, yeah. I don't have enough money. That doesn't feel good. That, yeah. <laughs> we don't want to think that and that's just going to show up in our life as we put energy towards that and we're here to tell you that these thoughts these vibrations well they're understandable and they're natural they're easy that's kind of what everyone is thinking they're not serving you they're in fact keeping you exactly where you are and blocking the flow of money in your life just like the paradigms they're keeping you exactly where you are they are proof that you are living from the outside in and not the inside out you're allowing yourself to look at your bank account maybe and feel a low vibration from what is currently physical and tangible yeah, absolutely. Said, we don't we don't want to be living from those circum from controlled by our outside circumstances we want to control our circumstances by the way we feel so when you allow yourself to exist on this low vibration the universe will serve you more things that are in alignment with this vibration proving that what you feeling that what you're feeling is true yes absolutely and then like bob says you, you got to let it flow because there is a power that is flowing to us and we get to direct that power and yeah you know and and again everything you know, our phones are on a frequency, you know, everything, you know, there's movies that are being streamed, the bank accounts are going on a frequency, you know, there's money transactions going on, everything is on a frequency, and so is our goals or anything that we desire. So again, we give more attention to that, you know, if we, if we keep looking at what we're getting down here, we're always going to get more of the same. And that's again on a frequency, right? But you have to think up there of what you want to stay on that frequency. And the thing is, again, our subconscious mind is wide open all the time. So whatever we're putting in there, you know, it's going to accept because it has no ability to, uh, you know, accept or reject anything. So whatever, ever thoughts that you're building in your mind, you're staying on that vibration and you're keeping your body in that vibration, it's law. You're going to attract it. And, and we're giving you the tools here to attract anything you want in your life. Absolutely. And I love this, um, this quote here. 
by John Ruskin. He says, education does not mean teaching people what they do not know. It means teaching them to behave as they do not behave. Mm -hmm. And that's such a great, great quote, because again, 97% of the people on the planet are, are getting the same results year after year after year, right? And we're just trying to give you these insights uh, how to change um, the results in your life. You know? Totally. I love the analogy to understand frequencies and vibrations better. The uh, analogy Bob likes to give a lot is about like a radio. You have totally, totally. You have yeah. the different frequencies on a radio, and you can't listen to a song on ninety-seven point eight if you're on right. one hundred seven point one. You have to tune into the frequency of that station in order to hear that song, and that's yeah. what we're doing with our thoughts and our vibrations. We're tuning yeah. in to the thing that we desire. And in yeah. this case, if we're talking about money, we're tuning into Definitely. the vibration of money. And it's really yeah. cool, actually, because we can understand that money has a feeling. Like, let's take a moment and think about what money feels like. Like, what does it feel like to be financially stable? What does it feel like to be financially free? To not have to worry about money, to be able to spend without worry, to be able to take care of yourself and the people you love. What does that feel like? Like maybe it feels yeah. bliss or comfort. And when I get when I get connected with a, a new client, that's one of the first things I ask them. And the thing is, like ninety percent of my clients have never. They're like, "That's a great question." I I ask them, "What would what would you be able to be earning annually that would make you feel comfortable? Like all my all my bills are paid." And they're like, "Wow, that's a no, like no one's ever really." taking the time to think that they just accept whatever's kind of, you know, they go for, but they don't like, what does that look like to you? What does that feel like to you? Yeah, right? absolutely. And by recognizing that, that these goals have a feeling attached to them, a that spirit. gives us it's so much, yeah, that gives us so much freedom because that means that we are able to attain that feeling without actually physically holding the money or seeing the money in our bank account or whatever it is you desire, we're able to attain that feeling and vibration without it being our physical reality. And that's what's going to get you to manifest it into your physical reality. You first have to step back and you have to feel those vibrations of it first. Yeah. And that's just deciding to you, like, what, what does it feel like to be financially yeah. stable or to be able to support exactly. yourself and the ones you love? Decide for yourself, yeah. what are some describing words? What does that feel like? I want to uh, um, give you a little example of something that I was going through in, in 2010 when I really first started digging into this um, material. I saw the, the, the movie The Secret, you know, a year or two before that or whatever, but it just, it didn't really resonate with me all that much. But then I bought um, this book here and it, you know, around the same time and it's called Ask and It Is Given by um, Esther and Jerry Hicks. And I had this book kicking around and in 2010, again, I was going through a bit of a rough time and, you know, I didn't have any money and I kind of exhausted all my resources. And, uh, you know, I was just, I started picking up this book and I remember reading a little bit in this book here, uh, sirens are going by <laughs> and it says, um, the key to bringing something into your experience that you desire is to achieve vibrational harmony with what you desire. And the easiest way for you to achieve vibrational harmony with it is to imagine having it. Pretend that it is already in your experience. Flow your thoughts toward the enjoyment of the experience. And as you practice those thoughts, you begin to consistently offer that vibration. You will then be in the place of allowing it into your experience. So I really dug into this book at that time. And, and I don't know if it was meant to be or what. So I was like, what do I want in my life right now? And I said, I could probably use money. You know, I was like, thinking about, I think I could use some money. Yeah. Um, so that was the one thing that I really wanted at that time. So I, I don't know how I got them, but I got two fake $100 bills and I got two fake $20 bills. And I put them, and this is a true story, I put them in my wallet, um, and then I looked at that in my wallet, and I was like, thank you, thank you, God, thank you so much for this money being in my wallet, you know, thank you for allowing me, and I just felt what it would feel like to have that money, and then within a week, I had a job, and then within two months, I was earning like $4,000 a month, but the thing I was in, 
vibrational alignment with it, right? And that's right then it just sent me on a path to just want to study and learn and learn, you know. Mm-hmm. And then uh, 2012, I I got I watched a movie called Down the Rabbit Hole, um, which did what's called the double slit experiment experiment by Einstein. And then 2016, I got involved with the Proctor Gallagher Institute and. Uh, yeah, and I just, I love studying this every day and, and it's worked in my life and that's why I love sharing it with other people because yeah. this stuff is real, you know. It can, and it's and, attainable and it's, for anyone. We're, we're all anyone, the same. You anyone. show away what we look like, how we speak, where we're from, all that stuff. We're all the same. We're all energy. Totally. We so all we get the can, same deal. Yeah. Nobody's, if all, you see somebody else doing something, you can do it too. Absolutely. We can absolutely. all tune into these. We can all learn about this. We can all tune into these vibrations and frequencies to literally attract whatever we want into our lives it's all vibrational alignment but we have to let it flow and we do have to aware be aware of some of these paradigms and acknowledge them you know and 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 work with that as well you know and if you can get in touch with you know emma and i you know we can definitely guide you in the right direction to help you through these paradigms Mm -hmm. because you know it took me years to really gain but i mean you know now that you know Bob has this program and it, it's such a quicker process when you have someone that has been there already instead of I've had people clients come up to me and they're like well I've been watching videos for five years have you gotten any no well I'm like you, you can't just sit there and watch videos and expect yeah. that you got to do the work you got to work with someone right it's Absolutely. not gonna right it's oh, not 100%, gonna happen, 100%. So. yeah oh, yeah yeah you know, I like yeah, you need guidance to make sure you're on the right path. Somebody who's yeah. who's have had those experiences, who've gone through it. Right. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Have, have the you know the results, and uh, I think this thinking into results program is is the best program on, on the on the planet. And I'm not just saying that. You know, it's a game changer. It, it, it is sure. huge. It's yeah. it's a it's a system, and it, it you know it's like I said, it's like learning play an instrument or or flying a plane or anything right you know it's a system you know so uh yeah yeah happiness success all the stuff it's not philosophy it's a system and anyone can learn it absolutely anyone anyone. yeah Yeah. it's not philosophy i would argue if we're bringing back to the money mindset i would argue that the attitude for the money mindset attraction mindset begins with the mindset and attitude of abundance yeah. Just, oh, I, yeah. I love the word abundance. It Absolutely. It feels good. Exactly. And I love, I, I, uh, I can't remember where I heard it from, but uh, someone I read one time just to get in the vibration, just go to like even an, a really, really expensive, you know, uh, hotel and just sit in there. And I tried that two years ago and I, it was, it just felt really good to just go sit in a really expensive hotel in the lobby and just have a tea and just absorb the, cause there's a, there's a spirit of wealth there. Um, you know, you think Warren Buffett, you know, has a, has a mentality or, you know, thinking lack, not at all. He has that spirit of wealth, abundance, prosperity, and he attracts it. And that's why. So if you just go to a hotel, that's, you know, a wealthy hotel there, you know, just have a tea and just sit there and just absorb, you know, look at the paintings on the wall, um, you know, look at the pillars, you know, anything that you can just absorb that, that wealth, you know, which is a good, good physical um, thing to do. Totally. Yeah. I I love that mindset of abundance and it's, you can, you can achieve that. Like I said, like the same thing of achieving the mindset of money, like abundance has a feeling to it. Like what does that feel like to you? For me, it's abundance is everything is always working out for me. So abundance is I, I don't it. have to worry about anything. Everything is coming into my life, flowing yeah. into my life with easy, ease, with ease. ease. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. And like, doesn't that statement feel good? Everything is always working out for me. Like yeah. that feels good. So yeah. why not hold on to that and practice that statement? Like allow that to be your life mantra. Everything yeah. is always yeah. working out for me. And as you do that, you're going to see that things actually are working out for you. Absolutely. And, as you do Absolutely. that, it's going to raise your vibration into that state of, yeah, everything is working out for me. And by law of attraction, because you've got that vibration, it's going to take a hold of that. And it's going right. to bring more things to you that work out for you and keep affirming that reality. And then taking pen to paper. I remember in that, uh, you know, paradigm shift in 2016. And that was another big thing. Um, when Peggy McCall came on um, and she's, 
talked about the power life script, right? And she's, she was saying, and even, I mean, Bob says it all the time too, you know, you have to write out your goals all the time because when you write your goals out on paper as if it's already accomplished, I'm so happy and grateful now that whatever it is you want, you can, you're activating your thinking, you know, like interacting with the outer world is not thinking, you know, that's not using your, your, your reasoning mind, you know, that's just things coming at you that's not thinking thinking is is having something a defined goal that you want to go after writing it out on paper and thinking of it all day long you know and being in that vibrational harmony with it too yeah and what Troy's talking about with the power life script that really ties into self-image so I want to talk a little bit about self-image and so like basically if expecting the best is hard for you if having the attitude that everything is working out for me is hard for you um, or trying to hold a good attitude, if you find that to be difficult, this could be because of your self-image. Um, Earl Nightingale said that to develop a good attitude towards the world, you must first develop a good attitude towards yourself. Um, and this can be really challenging. It can, be, it can be hard to develop a good attitude towards yourself if we have a limiting or low self-image. We actually, as humans, we have two self-images. We have our outer self-image and we have our inner self-image. We have our outer self image is the one we see when we look in the mirror and our inner self image is less visible. But when we take a look at our results, our self image, our inner self image is all over it. It's all over our results. We can't directly see it, but when we pay attention to our results, we see it. And this inner self image, this lives in our subconscious mind, which Troy and I were talking about a little bit with the paradigms. We have our conscious mind and we have our subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is the holding center of everything you've absorbed about yourself, about the world through all few years of being alive and even before that. Mm -hmm. It's the holding center of everything. It's where your belief system lies. It's where your self-image lies and it's where your paradigms lie. And it is controlling how you move about in this life and the results that you are getting. And like we were talking about, he was saying how when you're a baby, you don't have a conscious mind. You just have your subconscious. It is wide open for whatever is going on around you to go right in. So it doesn't, it's not necessarily your fault if you have a low self-image or a limiting self-image, but it doesn't have to be your destiny. You have the ability to change it, but only you have that ability. And that first comes with recognizing where this low self-image or this limiting self-image is showing up in our life. And this could be showing up in anxiety. This low self-image could be showing up in our inability to follow through. It could be showing up in bad health. Pretty much anywhere in your life you are getting results that you don't want. We can kind of blame it on our self-image. But the amazing thing is, is we have the opportunity to change that. And we can do that by learning these tools, really learning these tools, not just listening to videos and stuff, but like going through like thinking into results program, learning these tools that are going to hold your hand as you change your self image and how, as you change your paradigms and walk you through a door to a new life, a completely new life. Yeah. 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 And I love this uh, by Earl Nightingale. He says, your world is a living expression of how you are using and how you have used your mind. Mm -hmm. So um, there's, there's a list of books that I, that I always look to, and I'm going to suggest them right here. So if anybody wants a list of books, because studying is, is your golden ticket. It's the key. You have to study every single day. Repetition. It's important. It is so important every single day. Um, so the first one is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I mean, that's the one that Bob's been studying, you know, since 1961. Every day. Um, you Too, You Squared by Price Pritchett, which is another amazing book. Um, Feeling is a Secret. Uh, anything by Neville Goddard. Uh, that book is that book is powerful. Um, or The Power of Awareness. That's another Neville Goddard book. Psycho-Cybernetics. That, what Emma's talking about, it's all about self-image and how to change it because our, our, our subconscious mind is wide open. We can direct our thoughts wherever we want, mm -hmm. but it takes work. You know, you have, to, you have to direct them. You have to use your, your reasoning mind, your thinking mind. Um, 
And then uh, your invisible power, Denise Barnard. She um, she she worked with Thomas Trower. She was his only uh, pupil, you know. And she I think she played like she paid like twenty thousand dollars in like nineteen twenty. I mean that's like millions of dollars today. So so the, the only student of Thomas Trower. And another one, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles, very powerful. Um, the Edinburgh Lectures on Mental Science by Thomas Troward. So that one, that's a huge read. Um, the Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. And of course, You Were Born Rich by Bob Proctor. Mm -hmm. So these are all really, really huge, impactful books that, you know, there's like, there's like 10 books there, you know, and that, that, that'll keep you going for months and months and months. But I've read all of these. I'm sure Emma's read all, you know, these are just standard books in, in the self development um, realm kind of thing. If you want to. Yeah. And they're going to expand your awareness, which yeah. is really the basis of all of this. Absolutely. Studying, Absolutely. Going after a goal, you you, the next path or the next step becomes open to you because your awareness gets expanded by taking the step towards it and then yeah. your awareness gets expanded even more by taking that next step and the next step and next yeah. step. maybe a step for you is learning more taking exactly the opportunity to read a book or watch videos or talk to somebody about yeah. it mm -hmm. and that's that's all what that's all what books are there for i mean the thinking grow rich there was only one single purpose for that book to be brought out. And that was to give people 13 principles to success. And it was commissioned by the wealthiest person on the planet, Andrew Carnegie, in, you know, in the early 1900s. And he says, there's so many pe successful people on this planet right now, and I don't want these people to go to their grave with all these, the keys to success locked up with them. So that's why he commissioned Napoleon Hill to write these. I mean, that's what these books are for, you know, is to help you understand the power because we truly have unlimited power within us to accomplish anything we want. And that they're all locked up in books. So Every we just have to, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. There's, yeah. So anything that you want to achieve, you have to study. Am I willing? Of course, you got to study. You got to put the hours in, you know, am I able? We have unlimited potential within us so we're able to accomplish anything anything you see anybody else doing you can do also if i can do it you know emma can do it you guys can do it yeah i think that's one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is thinking that somebody can achieve something that you cannot yeah yeah for sure for sure we're, we all have equal I, potential we are all when you strip away everything we're all the same we are all energy all the same we all, all the have same. the ability to tap into these vibrations to tap into this material and literally yeah. create the world and reality for ourselves that we desire sure and the and the, the thing is like when you create a better world for yourself you're going to create a better world for everyone around you and and for the world you know like look at all the things that we've accomplished just in the last hundred years, you know, and, and it's all from people having a goal or having a dream. What if people didn't have that dream, you know, JFK to get, uh, you know, on, on the moon and just having the internet and, and having the iPhone, you know, where would, you know, where would we be without people's dreams? Yeah, absolutely. You know, totally. you gotta have a dream. Yeah. I mean, yeah. change, change is inevitable, but personal growth is a choice and the choice of personal growth is probably the best choice you can make. Because like Troy is saying, it benefits not only you, but everyone around you, which means the people around them and the people around them. Yeah. It has that, that, that domino effect, that butterfly effect. Absolutely. The best choice Absolutely. you can make. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think, I think a good thing to leave you guys on is circle around back to that life scripting. The, Troy was talking about this book, The Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz, and something he said was that self-image sets the boundaries of individual accomplishment. Self-image sets the boundaries of individual accomplishment. And this is so true because your self-image is it's programmed in your subconscious mind as a perception of who you are. So it controls about how you move about in life, what comes into your life, and how well you do. It also controls what you think you're worthy of, and then we act accordingly to this belief. But as I was saying earlier, we have the opportunity to change it. 
And so I wanted to leave you guys with a little exercise you can do. And this is what Troy was talking about with the life scripting. I know he has found great success with this. I have as well. And this is something anyone can do. And so basically, I'll explain a little bit and then Troy can jump in with this. Basically, life scripting is getting super, super clear on what you desire, the way you want to live, the person you want to be, getting super, super clear on it and putting pen to paper like we were talking about. There is so much power in putting pen to paper. And it's putting pen to paper in so much detail that if I or Troy or a stranger were to read it, we would be able to see the picture, read it, 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 just as clearly as you do. Because you want to, every time you read it, be brought straight to that image of the thing you desire. You want to be able to be brought into this whole new world of this visualization. And the key to this life scripting is going to be to do it every single day, read your life script every day, day. write it every day, maybe record it every day and write it it, in the present tense. We want to put it on your phone, record it on your phone. Yeah, but write it as if it is already happening to you because you want to get in that vibration of gratitude of like, oh my gosh, I absolutely love this person that I am. Like I'm so yeah. grateful now that I act this way and I do this and I feel this way about that. You have to own it. You have to own it. Totally. You have to own it. It's so powerful, right? You have to own it. And, and, and things will come into your life and you'll be like, you're, you're like a completely parallel person to that right now. And there's going to be things that have come into your life. You're like, whoa, but you have to own it. You have to own it. Because mm-hmm, I've had yeah. that happen to me. I get surrounded by people and I'm like, oh my gosh. You know, but I have to step into that person. You know, you kind of feel a little out of place because, but you've written that out and it's going to come. It's, it's law. Yeah. Imposter you know, syndrome. You, you, you got to own it. And when it happens, you got to be ready to totally. accept it. You know, the people, the circumstances and the events will come into your life. It's Absolutely. guaranteed. And I write think it that out. Yeah. something that can assist with this, with owning it is something I've been introduced to recently, actually. And this is like having an observation journal. So nice. you, nice. you want to yes. have your life script, you have it, you read it every day, maybe you write it every day, maybe you've recorded it and you're listening to it every day. You also want to have a journal where every night you are writing down observations of your day and write down moments that you felt you were in an alignment with this person you want to be, you're in alignment with this script, moments that you thought things that this person you want to be would think, or you acted in ways that this person you want to be would act, or maybe you're observing that you didn't, but by, oh, powerful. even if you didn't in that yeah. by a, you know, observation, you can take the steps to tomorrow, have a greater awareness to do act like that or to do have those thoughts. Yeah. And as you do that, it's going to become more natural. You're changing your parent, yeah. changing your self image. It's going to become a habit. And yeah, yeah exactly. You, you know, and I want to give some people, you know, you would talk about this and some people are on the fence about it, but I want to give you a little insight of physical proof. So Einstein did this and it was called the double slit experiment experiment and it's on YouTube. So what they, he did, he, he invented this machine that shot particles through the machine and he had a plate with two double slits and then he had a back surface there. Um, so they shot the the, paradi- the um, particles through the double pl- double slit, and then the first time the particles just went randomly on this back plate, right? And then they decided to put, you know, a, a camera right before the double slit, so, and then the particles went through the double slit, and they landed perfectly on the back plate as the double slit. And I was like, wow, <laughs> like it. So if we're aware of our thoughts, if we could, if we if we build the image of who we are, that's who it's going to turn out to be. Yeah, absolutely. It's in physical proof. Physical proof. Yeah, you just so, have to put in the work to totally do the repetition, to change the self, yeah. to, to change the paradigms, and acknowledge yeah. that you're changing. Express gratitude that you're changing. Let yourself totally. step into that role. I was yeah. in Bob's masterclass the other day, and they were talking about how maybe you'll feel like you're faking it, but you're already faking it. You're you're already acting as a person. You're already acting yeah. with this personality. And yeah. if you want to have it be something more or different, that means that that personality doesn't resonate with who you are. So that means you're already faking it. So oh. by stepping into this person you want to be, you're not faking it. You're stepping into nope. your truth. 
You're stepping yeah, into right. who you are meant to be and you're allowing yourself to express that in this world and allow yourself to operate in this world as yeah. the best version of yourself and exactly. in the best life for yourself. Right. And like Bob says, I mean, you know, we, we, we can't let the past control who we are going to be. We've all made mistakes, you know, things have happened to us, but we cannot let that control who we're going to be in the, in the future, you know, and all we have is right now. You know, we can't really dwell on, on the future, you know, and, and be like, oh, this is going to have that, you know, or we can't, you know, condemn ourselves for the past because it's the past. Bury the dead. Just focus mm -hmm. on right now and focus on who you want to be at this present moment. And it's inevitable. It will happen. Absolutely. Yeah. So I would say from this hour and just from in general, my biggest takeaways would be that you are already the creator of your reality. Totally. You already yeah. are. So it's not about becoming, it's about understanding you are and learning yeah. how to deliberately create, learning how it, you have to learn. It's yeah. like we said, it's, it's not a philosophy. It's just, it's something you have yeah. to learn. Yes. So learning yes. that you're the creator of your exactly. reality and learning that you can become whoever you want to be because you're creating your reality. You can also create yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're giving you the, the keys to the kingdom here. So definitely put these, these tools into practice and uh, you'll see results very, very quickly. And I love this other uh, example, you know, and again, you, like Emma's saying, you have to build that image, a new image. So you can't look at your, the way that your, your existence is right now. You have to build. A, you, so there's this quote, it says never, you can never change things by fighting the existing reality. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to change something by building a new model. So you have to build that new model. You have to write it out. And like Emma's saying, you know, it's a self image. So you got to see yourself as who you want to be. Absolutely. Yeah. hundred percent. Yep. And it's <clears throat> like, we're talking about with money. It's not about like, let's say you, you want to be a really wealthy person. It's not about yeah. spending a bunch of money you don't have. It's right. about being, being in that vibration of wealth. It's about yeah. seeing yourself as that person, right. feeling yourself as a, as a person. You have to feel your way into your new life. And that's really yeah. all it is. And it can be so fun. It can be so fun. I personally yeah. love creating my own reality. It is. Yeah. <laughs> and once you do, I mean, it's, it's like a plane taken off the ground, right? You know, it's, it takes momentum. It takes, you know, it takes effort. But once you get that plane off the ground, you know, and you start turning into your, the person that you want to be, you're going to, you're, you know, life, life can be a, you know, a, life is supposed meant to be enjoy, you know, it can be a completely blissful or complete, be a complete headache, right? So it's up to you, you get to choose, but you have to do the work, you mm -hmm. know, it just, it comes down to doing the work. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. Cool. <laughs> well, um, as always, great chatting with you, Emma. Yeah, you too. I guess we'll just leave them with that. If anyone has yeah. any questions, any questions, feel free to reach out to either of us at any point. Yeah. Um, we can always get back on, do a little Q&A if you want. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. Guys, got, got any questions, just definitely shoot them to us and we'll, we'll yeah. get back to you. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank awesome. you guys so much for watching. I hope you, you thank learned you. something. Hope you took some value from it and we will talk to you later. Talk to you soon. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Let's see.